What's up, everyone? This is Brett Feig from another Untech video. It's November 10th, Saturday, bright and early in the morning, and I'm making a quick video to show you guys about a, a new app that uh, is very useful if you like scraping from Facebook. Specifically, it's called Dig. Now, uh, I don't know how I stumbled across Dig, but it seems to have uh, one really useful feature, and that is getting group members from uh, from Facebook pages. It actually works with event guests really well. Uh, for some reason, it, it doesn't work with LinkedIn, and um, I've not tried the get product updaters yet, but I'll try that next. So real simple, just load up your favorite Facebook page. We'll, we'll pick on SourceCon for a moment. Click on Dig, uh, tell it you want to get group members, and it makes you put in an email address, right? So other than that, it's absolutely free. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my email address over here. Click Dig It. That's really all you need to do. As you see, it's sort of loading in the top. It uh, will extract all the information so every single Facebook page member that they have and will email it to you in a CSV file, right? So I think, if I'm right, we had about 6,483 members here. And uh, just pulling out my email, you see it sends me an email with a CSV attached. Just for the sake of making this video quick and concise, this is what it looks like when it comes out, right? So it gives you a Facebook ID. It gives you their long, elongated uh, Facebook link. Uh, and it gives you either the company or the employee. Seems to store in the same space within, uh, within Facebook. So you see you're getting a little bit of both. Uh, actually, I'm getting some locations as well. So not as accurate on, on the company name, but if you've ever browsed around a Facebook profile, you get a sense that uh, that's just sort of how it is, right? Uh, sometimes they list their, their Facebook company, or their company rather, sometimes just a location, sometimes you get a little bit of both, right? So uh, for all you uh, Excel lovers out there, uh, one of the things we'll probably want to do is just trim this link down. It's absolutely huge. So one way you could do that is using a simple uh, command here which is left the cell we want, which is this case, um, B2, comma, and the, the location that we're looking for in that. In this case, we're actually gonna do find and we're gonna look for the question mark, which is sort of what separates the actual Facebook profile from a bunch of other HTML commands, which aren't really necessary to explain during this video. We wanna find that in B2. Um, we're going to close it off and tell it to go back one space in essential. Uh, so it actually just extracts the entire Facebook page. Now I'm gonna click on that arrow, copy it all the way down to the bottom. Now the only issue here is you'll see some of them actually have, where it's just linked to the Facebook ID, profile PHP, right? So what we're gonna do is just get rid of those and uh, default them back. So what we're gonna do is sort those out. We're gonna look for ones that uh, use the word profile in them extract those down, now it's just the ones that we want, and instead of truncating that, we're just going to use the original link, right? Uh, and again, take all that, let's just copy it all the way down to the bottom. Take off filter, and there you go. Now you have a column with a concise, when we have it, Facebook page, uh, and a long link with their Facebook ID, which also links back to their Facebook page when we don't have it. Just to test it out, let's copy one of these go into a browser, uh, load up a new tab. Let's give that a try. Let's just paste that in here. Actually, uh, let's uh, add a new tab there. Let's paste it in. Let's make sure that link actually works. And it does, right? Face looks works perfectly. Uh, just for concise tests, let's check one of those shortened link that we just created and see if that one works equally as well. Yeah. And thank you, uh, Kara, for letting me use your profile for demonstration. Uh, so there we have it. Now, uh, what's, what else can we do with this? So we might want to enrich this data. For that, big fan of Zap Info lately. So what we're going to do is just copy down. I'm just going to copy the first 20 because, you know, this would probably take us forever if we did uh, let's just go down to the bottom. Uh, 6,364 results. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to take that that top uh, top 20 just for demonstration purposes here. I'm just going to control C, copy that into our clipboard, go back into any of our web page, any of our web browsers, 
going to load up Zap Info. Now, this program isn't free, but let me tell you, well worth every dime you could spend on it. This isn't a tutorial in this program. You could find another one on my YouTube channel. Uh, but I am going to demonstrate this useful feature, Import Records. Now, I'm just going to cut and paste it, right? Real simple. Click, can't, uh, click OK, and it already finds all the different fields. Now, I'm just going to have to tell it which ones I want. That first Facebook one I don't actually want, so I'm not going to include it. Um, this one is actually the real one. This is the truncated one that we we created. So I'm going to choose that as their Facebook page. Uh, we do have a full name. It got that correctly. I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's actually the Facebook ID number, which we don't want. This one is the original long one, the full name, and the Facebook profile, which we're going to correctly now identify as the Facebook profile. Uh, and make sure we get that right Facebook profile and the company which is really company and location but uh, the way the way uh, zap info enriches you sort of need name title and company is sort of the bare minimum so we're gonna see how well we're gonna see what this does for us so it immediately pulls in the information locks in the Facebook profile and it's going through these seeing if it can match any of the names titles and locations to LinkedIn or email or Twitter or other social networks now Given we gave it bare minimum information, you see it's it's actually got a handful of them, right? Identified some LinkedIn pages over here, um, which we could actually enrich any fur uh, further. So to do that, I'm actually just gonna filter it. I just I just want to see the uh, I just want to see the ones that actually have that it managed to find a LinkedIn URL, right? So that it's not empty. I'm just gonna apply that here. This filter. So here's all the ones that actually have. Linked, found their uh, their LinkedIn. So I'm going to uh, tick the first four of them, and let's enrich them further by pro clipping their profile. It'll give us options here. Given we weren't able to get a lot of information from their Facebook profile the first time around, let's go with their LinkedIn profile. Let's tell it to wait. Generally, five seconds is ideal. I'm going to drop it to three for this tutorial video. But if you're doing this in high volume, uh, don't do that. So as you see, it's actually going into each one of the LinkedIn pages uh, and pulling out any information it could find automatically. I'm actually not even doing anything right now, right? And you could actually see it in real time, kind of scroll through each one, check the contact box, and then scroll to the next one. Let's let it run for one more, just for the hell of it. And as you see, it's about two seconds each one, which isn't bad at all. So we're done. Uh, and this window should automatically close on us. Oh, sorry, has one more left to do. Picking on uh, Barcelona, Spain today, apparently. And there you go. You can see the ones that, that we've just enriched. Um, and it will actually try to enrich those further. So now that it found it, it's actually finding their email addresses right here, <coughs> where before we didn't have that. And if I look into the actual profile, it found it, 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 it righted the company, it righted the title, it got location, it got an email address, looks like a work email address. Even better, it basically scraped their entire profile and attached a nice picture, which I can then turn into if I wanted to. Um, well, I should actually do a whole lot of other investigation on this, right? So I could look them up on any one of these services just by click on the box. What I've really been liking is I integrated true people search into this, which is usually good at finding contact information. Of course, on my live video, I, I picked the one that obviously failed, but it links in with contact out as well. So if their details are on contact out, it'll pull that in. But let's see if we can. Obviously, this one, it's, it's not going to work uh, for those other searches. But let's see if it'll work on one of the other ones that has a more traditional name. Let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at uh, Dave over here. And let's, let's see if we can enrich it a little bit further with true people search. Really cool. Found a bunch of Daves. Uh, given this profile, we know that he's from Grand Rapids. So let's pick the one that looks the most reasonable. What do we have? Unknown. And he has one from Norwalk, but also lived in Michigan or has roots in Michigan. Um, it's a very good question. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Let's try this one. Let's see what that go. And it did find us a landline and an address. Is that landline accurate? I have no idea. Sometimes it finds like 10 or 15 different phone numbers and actually found us an email address, NPA World, uh, why, uh, sorry, NP, 
aworldwide.com, which when I scroll back to the original one, let's close out this screen. It looks like it's the right one. So this is probably the right person. And if I wanted to scrape his details and address, I could simply just clip it and it'll extract it into a record. It actually realizes that we have a Dave, which is perfect, and will allow us to combine that clip. Um, so now when I go back to here, let's go out of Dave and go back into Dave. Uh, it will have already you know, incorporated his phone number into everything here. Now, does it incorporate his address? It's a really good question. I don't know. Uh, I don't see it here, so maybe it doesn't. Then again, I don't know how many people are watching this or really care about doing you know, manual mailings. Uh, but in this case, it looks like it didn't get it, but everything else looks pretty correct. So that's pretty easy. That's how you go from, that's how you go from dig it into extracting all the information from a given LinkedIn, uh, sorry, from a given Facebook group, how you, you know, uh, clean up the URL and then take that URL and put it into zap info to enrich some of that data. And as you see, it's actually finding, uh, it found a, a Twitter address too, which is really, really good and will actually allow us further ways to enrich that profile. So as you see, it didn't do a bad job right off the bat, found us a bunch of LinkedIn's and actually we can go ahead and scrape these Facebook profiles in the same fashion we did LinkedIn. Um, I don't think we'll find much more data on it, but you can just run overnight or whatever you want. Thanks guys for checking this out. This has been an untech, an untech video. Checking out the new Dig Chrome extension.